Karen helped me. She met me here. Fred. They met me here Wednesday so that I could do this in front of them because she must have sensed that I was so nervous that I thought I was going to be sick. <laughs> but I'm okay. <laughs> now when asked if I would speak today, I grabbed my necklace and I gave Ruth Ann a pat, my nervous smile and laugh. <laughs> That's my nervous one. <laughs> Now, throughout my life, I had the feeling that I was going to do my work. Until now, I've always been told I couldn't do it. I wouldn't like it. No. Or discouraged with self doubting words from others. <laughs> But since walking through these doors a few years ago, the need to share the word of Jesus has been the strongest that ever has been. For the first time, I'm talking to complete strangers about our Lord, and it's a great feeling. I've all had some pretty amazing interactions with God throughout my life. During one of our women's meetings, I explained I had to take a break from typing up the cookbook because I had something else I needed to write. I explained I didn't know what it was going to be or how I was going to use it when I was done, but I knew that God wanted me to write about my life with him. And apparently I was supposed to use some of it today. Today's message is peace be with you. Jesus' tomb was found earlier that morning. It is taken from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23, and it reads, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. When I began to write this, I was trying to make my sermon sound like everybody else's, which made it hard to write. I called Ruth Ann because I was scared I'd fail today. I didn't come up, whoops, see? <laughs> I didn't come right out and, and tell her that, but that's what it boiled down to. Thank you. <laughs> After our conversation, I realized that not everybody's experience with God is the same, so why would our sermons be? I prayed for guidance, and I thought about the scriptures, and then I began to type. Yep. At one time, I closed my eyes while I was typing and just let the words come. Jesus had risen victoriously from the grave. Most of his disciples were gathered together and had locked themselves in a room to hide. They followed, or I'm sorry, they thought they were in danger for being close followers of his. After all, they knew the Jewish leaders had demanded that Jesus be put to death, that his body had been taken down from the cross and sealed in the tomb. When that happened, they were filled with despair and fear. They thought Jesus was their promised Messiah. Now their hopes were shattered because they had forgotten his promise. They, that he, they forgot his promise that he would return from the grave and they felt they had no hope, no future. 
After reading the scripture, I stopped and gave these words a lot of thought. Despite the locked doors, Jesus appeared in their midst, and he greets them in a greeting that's still common in that part of the world today. Peace be with you. Even though these words are welcome greetings to his disciples, they probably expected a rebuke for having abandoned Jesus at the time of his arrest. Jesus knew that his sudden appearance and the fact that most hadn't seen him since his resurrection would alarm them, which is why he greeted them in his usual way. The disciples apparently did not receive instant peace, for it was only after Jesus showed them his hands and his side that they were filled with joy at the sight of him. The marks of his wounds would identify Jesus and also prove that he was not a ghost. Jesus had said they would have felt joy when they saw him, and they do once the wounds verify it's him. Such joy-like peace was received as a mark of God's salvation. Jesus told these men, these very men who deserted him, ran in fear, and who now hiding behind La door, that he was going to send them out to teach them how to how, teach people how to be saved from their sins. Now on their own, they had no strength or courage. But Jesus was not going to send them out on their own. As the scripture says, Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on, onto them, and it filled their souls just like breath fills our lungs. Only the power of the Holy Spirit could give them the strength to go out into the world that they were now hiding from and prepare them for the task of telling the world about Christ without feeling fear. The one thing that came to mind to me was that everybody has a fear of something. And right now, you're probably all thinking of something you're afraid of. As for me, I have a fear of speaking in public, <laughs> but yet here I am. <laughs> Why? Because I put my faith in Jesus, and I knew that he'd get me through this just yeah. like he has every other time that I've spoken public. Jesus what? stayed on earth for 40 days after his resurrection instead mm. of ascending immediately into heaven. He did this to demonstrate to his followers that he was truly alive. When Jesus appeared among them after resurrection, their lives were changed. The greatest miracle in all history had just taken place. Jesus Christ was alive. During those 40 days, he appeared to various groups of disciples, proving without a doubt that he had been raised from the dead by the power of God. Peace be with you. When Jesus said these words to the disciples, they put their trust in him, even though they didn't know what their future would hold. They had faith in our Lord. When we go on faith, we experience that peace that comes with trusting God in our present problems and our unknown future. Sometimes I forget this and I let my problems consume me. And as I said when I first began, throughout my life I've had powerful interactions with our Lord. And each have come during a time in my life when I was overcome with fear and worries. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 27 says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The simple words of this blessing reflects God's desire for all his people. It's the source of all blessings, grace, and peace in life. The first time I ever prayed for myself was September of 1997. Now in the past I had prayed for others, but it was 
after going through the worst week of my life, that I finally prayed for myself. <coughs> Sorry. On Monday, the man that I was married to left while I was cooking dinner. I had gone to the restroom, and when I came out, he was gone. Because we worked opposite shifts, I thought he had just gone to work. Tuesday, my car was repossessed. Come to find out, the money that I was giving my husband for my car payments, he'd been keeping that money, and I was now three months behind. Wednesday, I got a call at work from my mortgage company, telling me I was three months behind in my mortgage for the same reason that my car was repossessed. Thursday, I got my car back, but when I came home from work, Courtney met me outside and said that her stepdad had been there and had taken everything that he had paid for. And I remember, well, I'm not too worried he hadn't really paid for much. But what Courtney should have said was that he had taken everything that he paid for, including her birthday and Christmas presents from the past several years. She was only 11 when this happened. Friday, I received a call from work from my older sister. Our mom had just been diagnosed with inoperable lung cancer. On my way home, on my way home from work, I saw a sign in someone's yard that read, Free Kittens. And I stopped and got one. <laughs> my life had been turned upside down in a matter of five days. I felt lost. Alone, fear, sadness, and anger all at once. And even though I was a Sunday school teacher and very active in my church, I forgot to turn my problems over to God. I was no longer thinking clearly. I was on autopilot. I had no peace. Seven months later, my mom moved to an assisted living apartment. The night before the move, Courtney and I spent the night with her. I laid in bed next to my mom as she slept, and I remember feeling so tired, but I couldn't sleep because I had so much on my mind. My office was closing. I was going to have to move away in order to continue working for the phone company. I had promised my mom that I wouldn't move as long as she was still with us. She knew my choices for relocation was Saginaw, Cleveland, and someplace in Wisconsin. And it was almost dawn before I fell asleep. After we finished the move, Courtney and I stayed behind for about an hour and visited with her. Before leaving, my mom gave Courtney a bag full of clothes. I gave my mom a hug and a kiss, and we left. I asked Courtney, you feel like going for a car ride? She said, sure. I drove from East Lansing to Florida, stopping in Kentucky to buy clothes because all I had were the clothes on my back, but she had a trunk full. Um, we arrived in Bradenton, Florida, the second night of our trip, around 3 a.m., found a motel, and went to sleep. When I woke up, I called a cousin, and he invited us to spend the day with him and his wife. We had a nice afternoon with them, and after dinner, I excused us so that I could take Courtney to the Coquina Beach for sunset. When we got there, I took her to the shoreline and dug up the wet sand and flipped it over. It's filled with these tiny little clams called coquinas, and I told her if she did that, she'd watch them bury themselves back in the sand. As she walked up and down the shoreline, digging up the little clams and gathering seashells, I found a spot in the sand to sit. As I sat there watching her, I had a million thoughts running through my head. I was feel, filled with fear about the unknown life I was facing. I was worried about so many things. I was worried about my mom, my daughter, my job, my bills. I was still angry at my ex-husband for taking the things that he had bought for Courtney. I wasn't sure how I was going to survive. And suddenly a warmth began to spread through me. It began at the top of my head and worked its way down to my feet. And as it traveled, I became calm and at peace. I briefly shut my eyes and I heard, I 
everything's going to be okay. And I knew that the hand of Jesus was upon me. He was giving me the comfort and the strength I needed in that time of my life. John chapter 14 verse 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives you, do I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, nor let it be fearful. It's easy to get caught up in an unhealthy pattern of fearful thoughts. God doesn't want us to be controlled by our fear. His desire that we, and he desires that we conquer our fears by trusting in him. Had I thought of this sooner, I probably wouldn't have been a 32-year-old runaway. Because that's what I was. I had run away from my fears and my worries. God's desire for all his children is that our hearts not be controlled by fear, but instead by his love and power, resulting in sensible, logical thoughts. And driving to Florida was neither sensible nor logical. <laughs> and I'm so glad that right now, at God's right hand, we have someone that came as a man to redeem us and fully understand what we go through. When Jesus walked on earth, he went through every human emotion so he could identify with us. Jesus is God, but he is in God's presence as a man. Then you may feel that people don't understand your struggles or your problems, and that's true for people. But it's not true for Jesus. Peace be with you. Jesus doesn't want us to worry. His message time and time again is not to fear and not to worry. And sometimes people get so caught up in their problems that they forget to pray. If you don't pray, you miss out on the peace that Jesus wants us to have. A couple of years ago, one of my sisters called and asked if I would pray for her stepdaughter's family. And I, she said she didn't know how to pray, and I agreed. And then I told her that I pray throughout the day. Not all of my prayers are formal. Sometimes I have an internal conversation with God as if he's standing there with me. Prayer can never be exhausted. It is a sacred conversation between us and God. If prayer were rain, the water coming down would be God's blessings, guidance, and peace. Stand outside with your head back and your arms out and let the Lord's blessings shower you. Through prayer, we can find peace within ourselves. You know, there are some people who use prayer to try to get God to change his mind about something. They try to make deals with him. If you heal me, I will. If you let me do this or that, I promise to. Do. God doesn't play let's make a deal. And you can't get him to change his mind because he already knows the outcome of whatever situation you're going through. He also knew every sin you commit even before you were born. When God sent us his son, nobody bargained with him to do it. Jesus died for us and took in all of our sins. Now some will say that the cross is the source of God's love and guidance, but I don't agree. It isn't the source. That would be like saying God's love and grace didn't exist for us before the cross. The cross is an expression of his love for us. For when Jesus died... Our sins were paid for. When I look at the cross, I think I am blessed through Jesus. While writing my sermon, I kept thinking about my dad. I felt like he was with me while I was doing it. When my dad was a boy, his grandma Valentine wanted him to grow up to be a minister like her father. My dad lived with her for most of his childhood, and by the time he was a teenager, well, he was dating a nice church girl, and he planned on becoming a Baptist minister. 
When World War II broke out, my dad was 17 and my grandma signed a permission slip for him to join the Navy. My dad's ship was a part of the invasion of Normandy and Okinawa. But it was while in Okinawa that he was blown off his ship after a kamikaze crashed into the ocean close to the ship. He had to float in the ocean overnight while the battle continued around him. I remember my dad saying he thought he was going to die. October 9, 1945, Typhoon Louise hit Okinawa. It had 92 mile an hour winds, 30 to 35 foot waves, 12 ships were sunk, 222 ships were grounded, and 32 ships were severely damaged. Once again, my dad thought he was going to die. When the war was over, in my dad's words, he came home a drinking, smoking, swearing man, and all plans on becoming a minister were out the window. He spent the next 28 years drinking. And I was a kid when he joined AA. And right before he joined, he wrote a book, and I'm going to share it with you. Dear God, I pray to you today. I need your help in every way. I do not know if you can hear, but I want a life without these fears. I turned my back on you one time, lived in a hell that I made mine. Now I pray forgiveness and humbly ask, come into my heart and take me back. My dad taught me that God put us in Jesus. When God sees us today, he sees Jesus in all of his beauty, all of his perfection, and all of his glory. When God sees Jesus, he sees us in him. He will guide you if you let him. He will be your flashlight when your world around you feels dark. The Lord will give us what we need. Like the disciples, I've seen miracles that only Jesus could have made happen. December 16, 1997, my mom ended up in ICU on a ventilator. And though she couldn't talk, she could write. And she was concerned about who was going to make her famous chocolate-covered peanut butter balls for our family Christmas. Now, we grew up calling them cow's eyes, but you guys know them as Buckeyes. Because when my mom got the recipe in the 70s, she couldn't remember if they were called Buckeyes or cow's eyes. And she settled on cow's eyes. So that's what we call them. Now, she didn't know that her doctor had already prepared us for the fact that she'd probably never leave the hospital. In fact, he didn't even think she was going to make it to Christmas. But he didn't know how determined my mother was to make it to our party. I knew, and I also knew the power of prayer. Matthew chapter 122 says, And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. In one week's time, my mother went from being on a ventilator to being home by December 23rd. She was able to make her famous cow's eyes for everyone, and only Jesus could have made that happen. God is truly good. Peace be with you. The Psalms and prophets speak of the peace of God. Peace is God's gift of inner serenity to those who place their trust in God. It's found in Psalms 4, verse 8, which reads, I will lie down and sleep in peace for you, O Lord. Make me dwell in safety. <coughs> David rejoiced in God's protection. In times of distress, God is the perfect haven of rest. He is listening. He hears our cries for help. God wants us to put our trust in him. Nothing will bring us more peace than knowing God is with us. Peace be with you. Jesus hears our prayers, even if those prayers are in the form of tears. In the winter of 2015, I was having trouble sleeping 
due to a combination of chronic pain and having too many thoughts going on through my head. At night, I would pray, asking God to let me know I was going to be all right. I didn't feel like I would be, and I prayed for peace within me. I sometimes had tears running down my face, begging God to please help me. I was literally driving myself crazy with worry. While lying in bed, I would often look out the window and see the street like that's at the corner. It was my habit when I would roll from my left to my right side was to prop up on my elbow, look out the window, and continue rolling. One night during my prayers, I had once again asked God to let me know if things were going to be all right. That night as I began to roll over, I got up on my elbow, looked at the window, and saw a profile of Jesus with his hands in the praying position. I froze. I shut my eyes. When I opened them, he was still there. I shut my eyes again and put my head down, and I felt panic. And I remember thinking, why is he here? I'm not ready to go yet. <laughs> Jesus' disciples thought they were seeing a spirit when they appeared to them, when he appeared to them. Jesus calmed them by saying, Peace be with you. Now I didn't hear those words. Instead, a calmness came over me and I heard, There's no need to be afraid. It's Jesus Christ. Now that last part, it's Jesus Christ, was a whisper. And it's amazing how many thoughts can travel through a person's head in a matter of seconds. Because right away I found it odd that I would refer to him as Jesus Christ because I've always ever called him Jesus when talking about him or praying to him. Was he the one telling me who I was seeing? Still froze and in mid-roll up on my elbow. I slowly opened my eyes again. Part of me was hoping that I was dreaming. But when I opened my eyes, he was still there. I knew it really was Jesus. I didn't speak. I just stared at the window. And I realized I couldn't see the street light. What I was seeing wasn't invisible. He was not see-through. In fact, it was a white glow around him. I wanted to panic, but it was the calmest I had been in months. I felt peaceful, I took a deep breath, never looking away, and I wasn't sure what I was supposed to do. And then it came to me. I had been praying night after night for a sign to show me that I was going to be okay. I also asked that if the sign was shown to me to please not let me ignore it because I was scared I was going to miss it. <laughs> and I needed to make sure that it was a sign from God. Now after that vision came to me, the, um, or after that thought came to me, the vision slowly began to fade. And as it did, the light through the, uh, the light from the streetlight started shining through my window again. And I remember when I rolled over and I was falling asleep, I thought, who am I going to tell this to? A couple of nights later, after scripture study, I walked up to Lyle. Because to me, he is someone who I truly believe could recite the entire Bible. <laughs> While he was putting things into his briefcase, I asked him if I could ask a question. And he replied yes. <laughs> and I felt awkward asking him if Jesus could appear to people. Because a lot of people would think you were crazy for saying you saw Jesus. I explained to him what had happened. I explained how the phrase, it's Jesus Christ, was whispered. I told him I never referred to him that way. I always call him Jesus. Without hesitation, Lyle answered yes. He believed that Jesus could come to people. He then told me to ask for another sign to make sure it really was Jesus. Now, to be honest with you, I wasn't really sure I wanted to experience that again. I know that Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. But somehow, I didn't think that this applied to me. I've never felt that pure of heart. I always associated that term with saints and nuns. But I did what Lyle asked. And seven, and eight, or seven or eight months later, actually, I was shown another sign. And I had my answer. I now try to do, I mean, I'm sorry, I 
now try to let God do his job. By putting, by letting God do his job, I'm putting my faith in our Lord. The more you know God's words, the more you can thank him. The more you thank him, the more his peace reigns in your heart. Sometimes I just smile and say, thank you, Jesus. The day my grandson was born, I signed him up to receive a book a month till he's five. His April book had just arrived when I wrote this, and it, it was titled, Peace is an Offering. I sat down and read it and found it to fit perfectly in today's message. Part of it reads, Peace is a joining, not pulling apart. It's the courage to bear a wounded heart. It's a safe place to live. It's from freedom of fear. It's a kiss or a hug when you've lost someone dear. So offer a cookie. Walk away from a fight. Comfort a friend through a long, dark night. Sing a song. Catch a falling star. May peace walk beside you wherever you are. We don't know what we'll face in the future, but what we do know is that whatever it is, Jesus will bring us through it. If we're fearful, Jesus will give us peace. As Jesus said to his disciples, he also says to each of us, peace be with you.